or awesome. negative things we're dealing with right now to help prevent these things that we're going through right now. Awesome. Guess what? I forgot to hit record at the beginning. So we missed okay. the first 11 minutes. But uh, since I didn't hit record at the beginning, we, I can do like a quick uh, wrap, like my, a summary of what you just said. So yeah. I, my understanding is, and not interestingly enough, I preach the same <laughs> as you yeah. preach, movement versus exercise. In fact, in my book, I have a section where I explain this concept. And I do like a lot how you actually did the math of the hours. Uh, because if we think yeah. about in, in a course of a 24 hour, if we only spend one hour out of 24 day mm -hmm. moving our body is literally yeah, not nothing. enough. And, yeah. and you put it yeah. in the perspective of the week. Yeah. So the key um, take home message right here is it's fabulous to plan your exercise, to plan that one hour or half an hour a day, mm -hmm. but do not l sleep on that. You need to keep, be mindful of how much movement you right. incorporate in your daily life, just like you explained. Yeah. I use a similar uh, rule. I call it the 32 rule or 22, depending on, on people's willingness. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I set work intervals. Just like you said, most yeah. of my work involves me sitting in front of the screen talking with yeah. my clients or writing blog posts or a book or whatever I'm working is a lot of seated work. And whether you work at a stand-up desk, like right now I'm standing up, or you're sitting, you are still in inactivity or lack of mm -hmm. movement. Right. And the key element is gravity. Yeah. Gravity is fabulous if we use it in other words if we move our body against gravity if we don't move our body whether it's like this or like this gravity that force pulls us down yeah so we lose muscle mass and we lose bone density and so on and so forth so that's why movement is so important throughout the day so my rule is 22 meaning for 20 Love minutes it. or 30 minutes you set the timer and you work and then you set yeah. the timer for two minute break. And in those two minutes you can do, I, sometimes I do push-ups. I do yeah. like 10 push-ups, 10 jumping, uh, jumping jacks or some, some activity again that involves yeah. me going up and down or sideways right. using gravity. Sometimes yeah. I will lift weights. I will focus on just one muscle. Trust me, two minutes of one exercise. It's a lot. <laughs> you're yeah. going uh, to get a, a lot out of that. Um, and you do that throughout the day. So it's again, the mindfulness of um, how much I'm sitting and how much I'm moving. You have to bring awareness into yeah. your lifestyle. Yeah, People that the, have physical jobs, they don't have to worry about that. If they cut uh, the grass, if they, uh, I don't know, paint, go up and down ladders, it's a totally different ball game. But most mm -hmm. of you that we are talking with today, are most likely working in front of a screen or yeah. sitting down at a desk or, or something of that nature. Or maybe, maybe you have work where you are interacting with people and you can't even do that, then Matt's um, option is, is more plausible every hour you take, even if it's five yeah. minutes, not 10. Yeah. But you, yeah. make, you, you weave in the movement. Yeah. So that's kind of a summary of what. Well, I call it, I, uh, the, uh, there's an acronym for this. It's called NEAT. And it's, that acronym stands for Non-Exercise Activity Thermogenesis, right? Yes. That's what we need to really in, increase is our NEAT. Cool. Because you know, like everybody's exercising. Most people are, are they, I don't understand why I'm overweight or I don't understand yeah. why I have high blood pressure or I don't understand why mm -hmm. I have, I'm still pre-diabetic, right? You're this not, just not enough. moving enough. Yeah. yeah. And, then you fa and then you factor in the, the, the poor quality nutrition because people stress. are trying to outrun. They're trying to outrun their nutrition. Yeah. yeah. But a great, uh, now you, I love the way you said weave, right? And, and I think this may hit home with people because, you know, uh, Mihaela and I are, are, are not um, necessarily proponents of snacking on food throughout the day, but we are proponents of snacking on movement throughout the day. So if you can weave in opportunities, right, or snacking on opportunities of movement whenever you can, and right. it might be, like, like she said, getting up every two minutes, or it might be every hour getting up 10 minutes, or it might be when you're in the grocery line, you're working on your hips, you're constantly 
working, you're in the bank line, wherever you can, you are looking for opportunities to get out of this posture that we're stuck in, driving and sitting, driving and sitting. This is this posture that we sit in. And when you bring in stress, I'm going to tell you guys a really cool a story that I, I studied with a, uh, a guy a long time ago, and he, and he uh, called it the startle reflex. Right? I thought it was very interesting. Mm. What is the startle reflex? His name is Dr. Eric Cobb. And I studied with him for a week, um, probably back in 2007. But when it comes to posture, right, like your brain, like we have, we have the autonomic nervous system. We have a sympathetic dominant and a parasympathetic dominant. And the thing that we do in, in times of stress, okay, it's fight, flight, or freeze, okay? A gun goes off, you either are running or you are fighting or you – do nothing at all and die, right? In a state of a, 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 a stressful or a dangerous or encounter with someone or a gun goes off, right? But let's just say a gun goes off or a bomb goes off or somebody goes, heads up, Mihaela, heads up. No one ever goes, huh? They go into fetal position, okay? You go into trunk flexion, arm flexion, head comes down and knees come up in deflection as well. Why are we doing that? Because we're trying to protect our brain. Mm -hmm. We're trying to protect our reproductive organs. Okay. And Mihaela, you know, this as being a veterinarian, right? We are the only idiot species that walks around with our reproductive organs in our heart. Just, just open that people to, to kill us or stop us from reproducing. Right. That's why bipedal animals like cats and dogs, they're walking on all fours. There's a reason for that, right. For survival. But it carries over f further than that when it comes to even us sitting at a desk all day, okay, or being in traffic, okay? Mm -hmm. Little bouts of stress. We don't have right. stress anymore. Tiger, fuck, you're being chased by a tiger and hope you make it. Whew. Stress goes up, cortisol, and then you come back down and recover. We don't have acute stress anymore. We have chronic stress um. all the time we're up here constantly versus back in the day we may have a stressful event and then we actually recover mm -hmm. so over time those little bouts of stress sitting at a desk little bouts of stress sitting at a desk we will find ourselves creeping into trunk flexion and knee flexion and going into a fetal position mm, and i i'm a fascial stretch therapist so I see this all the time. We are really tight and restricted mm -hmm. on the front of the body, and we're really weak and long mm -hmm. on the back of the body, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's because everything is coming in here to what? Protect your protect. brain, protect your heart, protect your reproductive organs. And when I stretch highly stressful individuals, like you find that. I can go, I can say, hey, what do you do for a living? I already know most of the time. But I know, and I've had people... Uh, that have had sexual abuse and, mm -hmm. and physical abuse by, par by, their, by their partners. And you cannot stretch their hip flexors or, or adductors, get into their inner, into their inner thighs. And, and they're not, uh, it hasn't been acute stress. It has been mm -hmm. years and years and years of chronic stress. And their body is in what we call a startle reflex. Mm. So that's another reason why we have to be careful on you know, exercise selection when we were very aware on how we program workouts at Primal Fit because we don't want to reinforce that, right? This posture that we don't want anymore, right? So we always think, let's open up the front mm -hmm. and so, we need so to do give, more strengthening. Give our audience uh, like one takeaway home, what they can do, what, what stretch or what exercise, if they want to weave it in, what would that be mm -hmm. to... to to go right. from here to opening up and, right. and having that good posture and not here again to sit right. back and all that. So how well, do do that? I think awareness is first. Absolutely. Right. Awareness That's why I love first. Pilates. Yeah. Yeah. It teaches body you to be awareness. aware of your body in space. Like how are you sitting? How are you standing? And start yes. paying attention to that and fix it. Make, you know, you can kind of give yourself um, feedback and check, cues on that, ups. but uh -huh. I'll be happy to, you know, if anybody wants 
a stretch routine that we do that we use. I have a, a ton of stuff that I can offer and send I'll email it to you or private message you guys stuff you can do. But ultimately we need to open up pecs and shoulders. Mm -hmm. Everybody needs to So this more would be a good stretch to go yeah, hold yeah. on to a door or Holding something and just door. go on the opposite. Or you can go here or here, mm -hmm. right? Um, a lat stretch. So if I was going to go in here and grab onto my mm -hmm. desk right here, I'm stretching the lat the and the side. armpit mm -hmm. area, right? We can even go here. I'll put my chair here. We can put our knee into mm -hmm. the chair. Mm -hmm. Ooh, almost got a cramp from yesterday's workout. Sorry, uh -oh. but I call that a, <laughs> it's a it's a quad stretch, and you just get your your knee. Oh. Put your knee in the chair. Okay. And you stretch the front of and, your uh, leg. Flexors, we're trying to stretch the front, the quads, mm -hmm. the hip flexors, the chest, everything. And then I'll show you this one because this one, this one won't kill me. I won't get a cramp here. But we can even get in here, right? I like oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Open up saline mm -hmm. and the sternocleidomastoid right here. Mm -hmm. All this stuff can get really bogged Die. down. Yeah. So you can move through these ranges of motion. You can even grab some tissue and do stuff like this. I call it a pin and stretch technique. So you kind of just can't grab some tissue mm -hmm. and then go the opposite direction. So all this stuff can be done nice. to kind of keep you from falling into that posture that really no one likes, right? And it doesn't look good. We want to get taller. And sometimes just by, and that, we'll talk about weight training, in a few minutes, I think weight training, <laughs> Not that's good, right? we don't want. <laughs> that forward, the forward head posture and the rounded, mm -hmm. we call it upper, we call it upper cross syndrome, where everything's rounded and yeah. forward. So yeah. we need to get out of that. So yes. just by doing daily mobility work and daily uh, movement, like uh, we're going to teach today, mm -hmm. and, be, and getting stronger, getting strong strength training. On your back, back, on your back. On we'll your talk, back. we'll, yeah. we'll come to that. One more thing. How do you feel about dancing for this? Because when you put the music and you just let the music move you that's a fabulous sure. way to sure. to stretch the body and yeah. to open up the joints without thinking oh i oh, have yeah. to do this particular yeah. movement it's it's absolutely music has its own stress release mm -hmm. uh benefit and especially now with the stress that we are all under that's chronic yeah, I feel like. Hey, I mean that's that's that knocking up. out two birds with one stone right there. Yes. Now we're yeah. moving and we're having fun and we're smiling. Yeah. So we all need more of that right now. Awesome. Good. Next point. So we covered so far. We have five points to talk about today. So the first point was movement versus exercise. So what we understand, mm -hmm. exercise is important planned exercise, but what you want to shoot for is the knitting, the non-plan activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, that involves movement of all, all of your body. And mm -hmm. one more thing about the power of movement, not only you move the joints, the muscles, you have with flexibility, with balance and all that, but you move the energy. It's not, yeah. we're, again, we're energetic beings in a concrete, uh, solid form. So mm -hmm. when we sit all day, when we don't move, our own energy, our force life stagnates. Yeah. You get depressed, you get sad, you start to see the world with all the negative stuff. Nothing is shiny, bright, or hopeful anymore. Yeah. Moving the body, especially with music, will help you move your energy. So you see the life with different eyes. So keep yeah. in mind, it's not only moving the physical body to benefit the physical body, but to benefit the energy, the whole of us. Like we are talking about yeah. holistic. Uh, Movement, is I, yes. Movement is medicine. Yes. Movement is medicine, people. You know? Awesome. Number two. What was number two on our agenda? All right. Number two. Let's get into the benefits of strength training. Oh, um, yes. That's an awesome yeah. strength so versus is, cardio, right? Yeah. And yeah, everything and I, and else. Yeah, I I always say if you have a if you have a choice between doing strength training or cardio, you do the strength training, right? So explain first um, what is strength training. Maybe not everybody watching today is aware of what strength training is. Well, it's I would call it load bearing exercise, right? But it doesn't necessarily mean that you're holding on to external weights or loads, right? Mm -hmm. Like Mihaela has been talking about just standing up and fighting gravity is a great way. So to, our to own body weight, weight can be sure. 
considered weight-bearing exercise. Okay. Sure, absolutely. Now, I believe in what we call progressive overloading, which okay. means over time, you your body weight's probably going to be easy. Not it's going it, it won't be enough for you. <laughs> so you'll eventually need to incrementally challenge your skeletal system a little bit more so you can okay. continue to see progress. Absolutely. Right? It's just how it goes. I mean, it's called we call it the said principle specific adaptations to impose demands so your body will always get better at whatever it does and it, even if it's bad efficient right? that's why i always say you get good at doing things bad sometimes right. so it's important yeah so it's important that we're always trying to challenge because your body's not going to change unless it's challenged right so um so yeah body weight squats pups, i think pull-ups pull are fantastic oh, pull-ups yes yeah. tricep right. dips um, Lunges. Dips. You got it. Lunge burpees. variations. Hate burpees, burpees but like oh that. boy, they are For good. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But we. I'm I, losing I, you. Another plug, but you guys are interested. What's that? Uh, it cho it cut on. off a little bit. Now? Is your internet good? Okay. Yeah, it says it is now. It said it was from, unstable for a second. Yeah, from time to time, it uh, I lose. Um, but if you guys would like to uh, go to the busy, my busy, busy professional blueprint private page, uh, because of we don't have a gym right now, and we're trying to make sure we're giving value and we want to help people all around the world, we're doing a daily body weight workout on on that uh, platform. So if you're interested, and you want to learn more how to do, awesome. incorporate weight training, and you don't have any equipment, or maybe yeah. you're limited on space, maybe you're limited on time, this is a really good tool for you guys to, to use in your own home. But um, let me go through the, some of the benefits that I wrote yes. down for, for weight training, training, for strength mm -hmm. training. Less risk of injury, improved bone density, improved hormonal panel, lipid panel, body composition, right? If you want to change your body, right? You mm -hmm. want to have a lower percentage of body fat, see your muscles. Improved posture. How about a better posture? We've been talking oh, about yeah. that. Shoulders back, chest up, mm -hmm. nice and taller. Increased muscle tone, lower percentage of body fat. How about improving your confidence, right? Oh, yeah. Decreasing your body fat, improving insulin sensitivity. So we always talk about that when it comes to um, diabetes, health. right? Like right. what's the best thing you can do for diabetes? It's going to be movement and weight training even more, I believe so, than, than movement in, in the case of a pre-diabetic person or type 2 diabetic because you're literally making room for, for sugar, more you're utilizing to get that, into the muscle, yeah. The muscle glycogen, we're utilizing it, we're and, and creating space for when you eat again. But right, you know, and we've talked about diabetes in the past. But um, a couple other things that people forget about the side effects of of resistance training: improved libido, okay, which basically means improved blood flow. Mm -hmm. Um, running or jogging faster. I talk about this with uh, endurance athletes. They say, oh, I don't have time for weight training. You need I'll, to. You I'll have say, no muscle. How are you going to I'll say, <laughs> I'll say, are you interested in, in crossing the finish line faster? And they always say yes. And I go, well, we've got to incorporate one to two days of some weight training into yeah. your regimen, all right? Stronger and stable yoga poses because yoga people always say, oh, I do yoga. I, I don't need the weight training. I'm like, well... You're only using your own body weight. Like eventually we need to challenge your own body weight with some progressive mm -hmm. overload. And that's where the weight training comes in. So if you wanna have a stronger yoga pose, right? right? Um, how about faster bike? How about longer runs with less risk of injury? Clothes fitting better, improved endurance, lung capacity, increased metabolic rate, improved self image. So if you're depressed, I find there's probably nothing else better besides changing your nutrition quality is movement and getting stronger. It just helps you so much with uh, preventing depression and feeling yeah. good about yourself. Definitely. And, and weight training or uh, starting with, let's, let's get into the practical a little bit. Um, if someone did not exercise regularly and did not does has like a sedentary lifestyle not aware of movement they they uh -huh. really did not prioritize that at all in their life and they need to lose uh, let's say 30 pounds or more mm -hmm. yeah i personally and i want to hear how do you 
encourage those people to approach exercise because when you're you already carry 50 pounds more yeah. weight on your frame yeah um i always say first we work on food because your weight loss and maintenance really has to be independent of of exercising or not you've got to master fueling your body mm -hmm. and nourishing your body for the excess weight to fall off and not to come yeah. back yeah. secondly i feel like it's punitive to make these people do this crossfit or running or yeah. The, you know the joints are hurting even heavy weight lifting i always mm -hmm. encourage moving their own body and that's why i always go start yeah. with dance start with walk get in the pool mm -hmm. things that will will first of all low barrier exercises because you know yeah. if you've never done it you're intimidated you don't show up in the gym and you have no clue how to use the machines and it's like it's the the social factor the emotional factor all of that um, and I always remind them, you're yeah, already they're, they're carrying. They're not confident and they're embarrassed. Right. You're already yeah. carrying 30, 50, I don't know, 100 pounds more. And I know every so often I go to the gym and I put a weight vest on yeah. with like 50 pounds. And I am I, dying there. So I just remind them, you don't necessarily have to go and lift that heavy weight yet. Right. So always start from where you are with the goal that, yes, one day you will be killing it in the gym if that's what you want. Yeah. Doing the bikini competition if that's on your uh, desired list. But right. do not think, because if we think of from where we are right now, something that's absolutely overwhelming <laughs> and intimidating and, all, and, and literally painful, that's sure. a recipe for failure. Yeah, and I think you make a, a, a very good point because most people who need to lose weight um, have struggled m more than once, right? right. They've been uh, they, most likely and they're lacking confidence and they're, they're lacking know-how. So the first thing someone needs to do, anybody, I think everybody needs to do this, is they need to hire a coach, right? Oh, yeah. They need to hire a coach, first 100%. of all, so they learn how to do things things properly and they and they there's progressions and there's you know build a foundation first right um but i love the idea you just said i, lo I love weight vests right what uh, an overweight person has a significant amount of muscle already because they have to carry around their body weight everywhere but they're used to that body weight so okay. it's i love using like a 20 pound weight vest or a 15 pound weight vest and going for a walk so now we're challenging someone that's already used to their own body weight mm -hmm. but we're not jumping we're not running we're not right. placing excess loads on their joints right. we're not um intimidating them like the key is to have somebody be become successful right yeah. and this is the key to like the key to consistency is not killing people and i i, I have one to workout this, i have to <laughs> no, i have yeah. to tell this to people to my coaches and and trainers all the time like if you want to have a successful business stop smashing your clients they are not you they yeah. don't enjoy it like you they're they, there they are they're, you 15 years ago <laughs> who knows how many years maybe, ago maybe right? but they may not have never been an athlete and they hate it and they're only in with you because their doctor told told them to be there so you have to take into account their health history and their current exercise level and then you have to customize accordingly um so it, it's very important i do minimal with people their first session i would rather them leave and say i, I probably could have done, done a little more. bit more yeah i could have done a little bit more and i'll say hey that's great i appreciate that feedback because that means we did our job so now we can we can ramp things up incrementally okay. because if we smash somebody and they throw up in the parking lot or they can't walk <laughs> for five days what are the chances of them walking back through my door they're not mm -hmm. and they already have a negative um association. cognition or, or association with exercise because they failed so many times so we need to change that mindset for them and let them know like hey less is more and consistency over intensity consistency over volume yes, because that's, that's, our what, next gets, that's point, what gets right? results yeah that's but I, I love i love what you said right there it's about customizing but more than anything bottom line from this small little discussion right here is hire a coach you cannot do it alone you don't know what you're doing 
I, 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 Chances are you get injured, like, like that's the very yeah. reason why you still, you still struggle with, with health or you still struggle to lose and keep off 30 or more pounds. It's clearly right. because what you're doing is not working. So why not invest in yourself to work closely with someone right. that is there to support you, to push you as much as it's, it's good to be pushed yeah. and to help you be consistent that's Six, like success consistency is key. success leaves clues right we all, yeah. always use that i think it's a, a great cliche you know success leaves clues i am gonna hire mihaela to help me with my nutrition i'm not gonna go hire someone who doesn't look the part or who doesn't get results that doesn't make any sense at all so most people need to hire a coach and they they need to understand uh, most people flat out do too much too fast and don't have the, the proper it's not sustainable it's not sustainable. not sustainable it's like going to run uh, a marathon without training for a marathon right running okay. right. one mile or three miles a week and then you go to run a marathon it's, it's just non-sustainable you you said An another analogy i'd like to put forth real quick before we move on is think about weight training as your main portion of food or your main plate, right? I got this from a, a friend of mine uh, named Ben, but I love it because this is the main plate and your side dishes, right? Your broccoli, your sweet potatoes, your macaroni and cheese, Hopefully your whatever. Hopefully not. <laughs> Hopefully not. But this, <laughs> these side dishes represent the yoga, the Pilates, the spinning, the boxing, the boot camps, the whatever whatever you enjoy i say you continue always do what you enjoy because if you don't enjoy it, you're not going to do it consistently but everybody should be doing a dedicated progressive weight training at least two times a week eight times a month and it doesn't have to be very long but then you can complement that weight training with something else that's exactly what i wanted to like have like a takeaway so you 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 say that twice a week is, is sufficient I think eight times a month, along with movement, daily movement mm -hmm, and mobility mm -hmm. and restoration mm -hmm. and, you know, there's a holistic approach I believe in, but I definitely think I've gotten great results from people on two days a week of strength training, increasing their NEAT or their non-exercise mm -hmm, activity mm -hmm. thermogenesis. They're Absolutely. gonna move more, get their steps in. And obviously the diet 90, right. 10, 80, right. 20 needs to be there too, because there's no way that that amount of activity or weight training can mm. can counteract too many calories or too many bad calories coming yeah. in. So there has to be that balancing act. Yeah, definitely food is foundation. It's structural, mm. there's no question about that. You, you can't think that you can eat whatever you want and exercise the way Matt is telling us right now and you're gonna see mm. results or significant results, I would right. say. I mean, Mihaela, most people do way, put way too much emphasis. They emphasize exercise way too more much. than yes, yes. I, I but, and I that's because so. I, I, I really think because it's easier, it's easier to get to the gym. Not everybody, but it's easier to walk through a gym door and do something versus taking care of what's most important, which is what's outside the gym doors. No. Most people cannot get their shit together when they leave the gym. They don't know what to do. They need to hire Mihaela or myself to help them. But it can't, it, it just, think of the time. Think about it. Here, let's go back to time again. 168 hours in a week, right? You're only working out average probably three. And then you're eating six meals a day. Do the math. Six times seven is 42 meals. You're working out three hours out of 168. And how much do you burn in, in an hour, you know? So this calorie burning and eating is really, is really de deceiving. And I talk about, I bring it. that, and I do some numbers in my book to where I explain it. You cannot think that you can out work uh, out work or work out um, and wipe away calories. That's just, just the wrong mindset to, to go with. The, and going back to the benefits of this plan exercise is really for everything you've said is cardiovascular health is stress release yeah. is bone density is muscle strength balance prevention of fall 
exercise and movement, they have tremendous health benefits. But, but relying on that for weight loss, it's deceiving. It's, it's just for sure. not not uh, for most people most people cannot and that's why because we have this twisted thinking about the how important exercise is in weight loss we hear over and over again people say oh i got sick i couldn't exercise i gained weight or uh, i traveled and i couldn't exercise i gained weight it's not because you didn't exercise it's because you did not eat according to your body's needs in the absence right. of movement Right. So, so regul being able to regulate your food intake to maintain your weight if you are at your ideal weight or to lose the weight that you need to, is an access, it's a matter of, of, again, eating. Exercise comes in for all the other benefits. Right. And I will add, because we do have this, especially during this stressful time that we're all in right now, we're talking about the benefits of exercise and one of them being stress management or, or just dealing with take account the totality of stress in our life because exercise is another form of stress as well so we do have to think about right. that what was your sleep last night how was how was your traffic how's your relationships how are you thinking what's your mindset your mind nutrition are you watching the news like you're really stressed out i'm going for a run right Maybe not the best time to maybe go for, for a, a run. <laughs> maybe for a walk, right? And we do have to take, yeah. Hey, you know what? I think I'm gonna sleep in today, right? Or I think, um, I think I'm just gonna go for a walk, or or do some mobility, right? Or do some stretching mm -hmm. routines, which I'm gonna send you email you guys if you need it. But yeah. we have to look at that because sometimes, you know, exercise can be a detriment. You're doing yeah. too much, and then we go in the adrenal fatigue and thyroid we, stuff we boost the the sympathetic nervous system the one that keeps right. us in that flight state rather than yeah. bringing and and really if we want to simplify again why we get sick during stress or a person that's always stressed uh, it it has to do with this the balance between these two nervous systems the when the yeah. parasympathetic the one that helps to relax and restore mm -hmm. and rejuvenate is is not supported and only the the fight and flight fight. is dominant that's when we see more disease those people are more prone to the heart attack mm -hmm. to the hypertension to the cancer to the diabetes all of that so we talked about the root cause being in our gut Mm -hmm. uh, that it, it holds true with regards to like with the fuel, the food we eat, the, to maintain the again the physical body. But when it comes to to our chemistry, to our uh, energetic body, we have to we cannot ignore the nervous system, and that's yeah. the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. And then of course is the immune health. We cannot separate ourselves on systems; they are all interconnected like a web. But for purpose of, of helping you understand what matters and wh how things work, we tend to separate them. But just think of you as a one whole being yeah. that requires all these elements. So just like Matt said, if you had a bad night's sleep, you're stressed, you didn't eat well, you have a ton of things to take care of that day, don't think you're going to go to the gym and run five miles on the treadmill yeah. so you drench yourself in sweat that will put you under more stress your body needs the opposite maybe you just do some stretches maybe you do a dance maybe do a yoga mm -hmm. and best is walking barefoot possibly yeah. uh, possibly barefoot well great walking. you make a you make a, another great point right there like i really think that um the you know walking is under under appreciated As, yes i think it's it's a it's a great modality I think that our society is also bought into the more is better mentality. And, and you just said sweating, and it made me think of this. Most people equate sweat with fat loss. They equate exhaustion I with wish. fat loss. They equate <laughs> um, pain with, a, with quality. They're, uh, pain and nauseousness and sweat, sweatiness and you lying on your back and can't catch your breath does not – is not um it does not correlate to a quality it's workout self-love <laughs> it's not self-love like i'm telling you most people i swear to god Mihaela, they'll be like you must work out every day matt and i'm like 
listen. Well, you move you every day. That's, that's exactly right. Right. Quality. Yeah. And a, a great, I'm going to leave, I want to leave uh, you guys with a great analogy. A guy named Mike Mincer, who used to train a, a, a really po- uh, famous bodybuilder. Mike Mincer said, train, train intense, train brief, and train infrequent. So think about that for a moment. In, in contrast to today's CrossFit generation, not hating on CrossFit. I'm just saying most people want to go hard for long periods of time every day. And there is no recovery time. Right. And we're talking about lawyers and doctors and, pe- and people that work at a desk all day. Mm-hmm. These people do not need to be trashing themselves because once again, you're going to get injured. And then you're going to be sedentary again because you did yeah. too much too fast. Yeah. So go challenge yourself, not for very long and not very often. You need to recover. And that could be, like you said, sleeping, walking, stress management, meditation, yoga, Pilates, yeah. right? Those are other yeah. options. Yes. Awesome. So we covered very well uh, second point, which was the benefits. And I think we touched on uh, your third yeah. point. What was the third point? The, the frequency, yeah, consistency yeah. versus volume. So it's more. So so just to kind of uh, wrap that one up, it's much more valuable to be consistent in your workout and movement rather than be sporadic. One day you do a lot, you beat your body to death, and then you can't do anything else because you are so. Uh, sore or you keep beating it without giving any rest you go against your nature and in the end you end up injured or is more stressed non-sustainable the key word the key word you're getting to is you brought it up earlier was sustainability sustainability how sustainable is that for a general population people that need us the most how sustainable it's not and that's why I always say consistency over intensity or Very consistency good. over a vo- training volume. Because every January you see this. Yes. Nayla, you see it, right? People we come in, they try to, they want to revamp their diet. They want to work out every day. They come into my gym, Matt, I'm ready. I want to go unlimited sessions, unlimited training sessions. And I'm like, hold on, Mary, let me get some, some background information before we determine what I what I rec- uh, recommend for you. When's the last time you worked out? Oh, it's been quite a while. It's been probably three or four years. I, I had a baby recently. I'm, I'm going through a divorce. Um, <laughs> I just lost my job, but I'm on severance right now. So I can afford, I got plenty of time right now. Um, I, I'm pre-diabetic. I'm on this medication, that medication. I have sleep apnea, right? And I'm like, all right. So let's start with one day a week. And get you moving on a daily basis, right? And so, between that, yeah. Because what are the chances of me? I, do I need the money? Of course I do. But I want someone to get results. And that, pro, that type of protocol is not going to get them results. And I'm going to lose a client. So I'd much rather them be there one to two days a week. I focus big time on nutrition and daily movement and stress management and sleep. Right. Oh, and then so I got somebody come in two days a week for a whole year, yeah. which is 96 sessions. So let's do the math. I'm, you know, I'm not good at math, but basic math. I got some cool little analogies. Two days a week for a full year is 96 sessions. If I'm not mistaken, it is 96 workouts over a full year. If I give Mary five days a week, she'll last two weeks. So <sighs> let me ask you this. 96 sessions versus 10 sessions. And Mary's going to get to the end of the 10th session. She can't walk. She can't move. She probably hurt. She probably strained something. She's injured now. And she's going to go, I knew it. I knew this stuff's not for me. Yes. And because she already has an all or nothing mentality, she's failed so many times in her life. She's not going to do anything again until guess when? Another Next three January. <laughs> Maybe right? three so years. Yeah, or or another three years, right? But that's the common, like, people don't get it. Yeah. That is our population. That is America right, right there. And we need to take a step back mm-hmm. and focus on what's most important, and that's nutrition and daily movement. movement. We complement awesome. that nutrition and daily movement with the exercise. I cannot agree more with you. I mean, 
yeah. that's what we need to shut out loud all the time is nutrition it, and daily not, movement when we once we get glamorous. and sleep and, and prioritize sleep this it's is gla- one situation this is what not gl- it's not glamorous it's not glamorous no it's, it's not definitely it's not the beach body in three seconds a day message yeah. no right uh, but in this in this case is um, less is more yeah Cons- and again it goes back to consistency and being sustainable that's yeah. what I, I, I like you, you emphasizing that. So our next point. Do we have any questions? I haven't been uh, following. I see we have people on, watching us on and off, which is fabulous. But I can't see if anybody's putting questions. Yeah, give us some questions, guys. And, and also, if you're interested in um, getting any information support. about Mihaela's book, and I can also send you guys over some mobility, daily mobility protocols and stretch protocols to help you guys um, uh, prevent from going in the startle <laughs> reflex. <laughs> yeah. To help you oh guys. Oh my God, that's so important. Yeah. But okay. I think the next topic, we dove, we dove into it. I lost you again. Invigoration versus, okay, hold on. It okay. says I'm unstable. Am I back? Yeah, you're back now. Okay. It, it's, All right. It's going on and off, and your, which is the first time happens for an hour series so far. Hopefully, as as well. Not we're all, too... I think, yeah, we're almost done. Yes. But um, invigoration versus obliteration, right? And because, like, I've always said, just like nutrition, nutrition can be medicinal mm-hmm. or it can be poisonous. And I think the same thing can be said for exercise too. If given the wrong doses or the wrong type right? Like you can create more problems for somebody. So it's important. We don't have to kill you. It, uh, sweat and fatigue and nauseousness is not indicative of a, of a quality workout. I want to say something um, about sweat. Yeah. Sweat is fabulous. In fact, we should sweat every day, but it doesn't always have to be induced by exercise. It can be Passive sweat through sauna, which Matt has one yeah. right there. So it's not yeah. that you, we don't want you to sweat. You have to, to know when is good to sweat with exercise and yeah. when is good to sweat just yeah. by sitting and letting the Smart. heat stress yeah. in a good way your body again yeah. and help you. Well, that's parasympathetic. Yeah. That's a parasympathetic dominant modality. Right there. You're right. Running which is sympathetic. Right. So, so there are times when you want to sweat through exercise and sauna. Or there are times when you want to sweat only by lying down in the sun or, or being in a sauna. And there are times where, where maybe you want to stay away even from sweating. You always yeah. have to check in with your body. Again, your body has all the knowledge it needs. You just have to trust it and listen to it. Listen to it. Do yeah. not ignore it. Don't go to all the aspects around you. Check in with yourself first. Yeah. And again, if you work with a coach, find a coach that is able to help you fine tune your relationship with yourself. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Well, listen, I think we we had already delved into like the no pain, no gain type of mentality. But I, I think this bonus one that our number six that I, I think is so important too, and it kind of goes back to our parasympathetic modalities. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to give you guys one more analogy because I think these analogies help me remember things. And I think most people it does too. But think of your body as a bank account, mm-hmm. okay? And when you exercise, when you go to that spinning class or the boxing class or even the weight training class, like those, you're, you're spending money. Mm -hmm. right you're expending energy but you're expending you're spending money expending energy and spending money out of this bank account you only get one bank account now so if you're not depositing money into this bank account with stretching mobility sleep sauna um uh food cryotherapy walking on the beach lying in the sun going you know parasympathetic working in modalities that's what Mm. i call it working in versus working out how much are you working in how much are you depositing money into your body because if you're not depositing money in your body through parasympathetic or uh, 
uh, modalities such as sauna and walking and all this great stuff, sleep, you're going to go into what's called overdraft, right? right? You're going to bounce a check. And what's bouncing a check in a, in a human body? It's called injury. It's called injury or some sort of dysfunction disease. or some sort of a disease or disease. Mm -hmm. So we have to think about this bank account. We only get one of these bank accounts. It's an incredible human vessel that we all have access to. How are you treating it? How are you feeding it? What fuels are you putting into it? And how are you expressing it through exercise? And how are you depositing money back into it through adequate sleep and stress management and all these other things we've been talking about today? Because it's just, if you don't, that's where we, ha we see pain and inflammation and disease come forward. How do you like that, that uh, analogy? I love it. I think it's awesome. And most people can relate to a bank account and going in overdraft and having to yeah. pay fees. You know, yeah. the fee we pay is, is the, the, the lack of life and livingness by being sick, by being injured, by being depressed, et cetera, et cetera. My quote is health, health is the currency of life. So kind of like it. in the bank another analogy. Another t-shirt. That's another t-shirt. Yes. And I absolutely believe. Oh, I lost you a second. Are you back? I think okay. I'm back. You're back. back. So, right. so if we were to, to make that as our mantra, life is the currency of <laughs> health is the currency of life, yeah. then everything we do, we do by thinking, is this helping me build up my currency or takes away Depleted. from it? So it's, right. it's exactly what you said. And I, I love the analogy. It's, uh, fasting for is for instance mm -hmm. it's taking out of of the bank right because yeah. we we want to we expand we get rid of stuff yeah. uh, uh i never thought exercise of that I, I, is, I never thought about that but, you're so, exactly but it's right. always the bell is it's the balance yeah. like how much we take out versus how it's much kind of both in. fasting is kind of both right i think it's because it's healing at the same time yeah but also it's if resting. it's too much, if it's too yeah, much, it's too it's much yeah. or if it's done at the wrong time, it's yeah. stressful. It, it can yeah. raise that. Uh, yeah. Not to say that I love fasting. We will have a session on, on fasting and intermittent fast, fasting in the future and its benefits. But just thinking, again, thinking how much, like lack of, like what will take out of our about. bank account like on our, or, or, or reduce our health currency? Lack of sleep abusing our body with alcohol with drugs smoking mm -hmm. even um, taking out prescription medications sometimes you have no choice but they come at uh, mm -hmm. uh, all the side effects right that we have to to mitigate and to to start to juggle um exercising too much or not exercising at all or not mm -hmm. moving right. those right. are all things then and then is the food and then is the lack of uh, time spent in sun and in nature and all that. So we always have to think, that's why uh, really it's about the lifestyle. If we can think that there's no magic um, pill, no magic formula, no magic diet, or no, it really boils down to very simple, food and lifestyle. Yeah. What you fuel your body and how you live your life. It's what's, showing up in your reality yeah yeah how are you using your 168 hours we all have the same time yeah. right we don't have any more time 168 is all we got every single week 24 a day how are you utilizing your time yes so uh we covered recap so we cover movement versus exercise uh -huh. we covered what was second one it was uh uh, strength training over strength everything else. Versus I everything think, uh, else. So weight lifting, yeah. including your own body weight. We uh -huh. covered um, consistency versus volume. Uh, volume. Uh -huh. we, we talked about, uh, what was the fourth one? Stimulate point? versus obliterate. Stimulate versus obliterate. <laughs> and then we had... Um, working in versus, versus working, working out. out. Those were the main points we covered. Uh, the tips we gave was be mindful of how much you move versus mm -hmm. sit or stand. Yeah. Like right now I'm standing for a whole hour. I better start doing some movement, right? 
uh, use gravity to your advantage. And that means you want to do exercises that will make your body go up and down or sideways. So, uh, and, and we'll dance. dance. People need yes. to dance. Yeah. Um, use the rule. The one 10 rule would be like one hour with 10 minutes break or 30 minutes with two minutes break, whichever works for you. Yeah. Set a timer on your computer. If you work on the computer, on your phone, use the, if you have uh, one of those smart, uh, like the up, Apple Watch and all these other watches that right. count your steps. Or a pedometer, or you can just have a pedometer on your waist. Uh, at least two days a week, you want to prioritize some form of yeah. weightlifting. And again, if you may be at the point where you start with your own body weight, and that will be push-ups, squats, lunges, tri triceps, pull-ups, if you can't do those. <laughs> I'm saying yeah. that because I can't. Yeah. <laughs> well, if people if people need some some ideas, some body weight ideas, I just text you, me. That's just what you are, and that's me. what you are putting on your uh, website. I mean, on your Facebook yeah. page. Uh huh. Um, you don't have to again kill it every time. You want right. to pay attention to your body and uh, use um, uh, let your body I'm guide. Mahela, it's. Uh, yeah, it's it's challenge. It's a so challenge yourself, not for very long and not for very often, right? Mm -hmm. And ch if you believe, if you still believe that you your the exercise, the lack of it, is the reason you are not losing weight, shift that belief. Exercise has many roles, but the 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 weight loss is not the reason to exercise. Correct. And now uh, let's take five minutes maybe or less to just give some tips, considering that most people right now cannot go or they will not go into a gym because they, we are yeah. encouraged to isolate most gyms, big gyms are right. closed. Uh, maybe they don't even work with a trainer because of the, you know, need to isolate. You are going to show exercises on your page yes yeah the private so facebook page has a daily body weight workout so they can follow um uh, we're gonna put along. a link to your page right under the video sure. yeah, for, at least for my you. people because your people already know where to go yeah. um yeah. that's one uh secondly again you don't need equipment you can dance if you don't want to do anything else just dance every day and uh, sit on the chair and stand <laughs> off the chair yeah. as a squat <laughs> exercise. I mean, again, you, you will show the exercises. And, yes. and if you have weights twice a week, do, do some weightlifting. Um, again, you don't have to, or, or resistance bands are fabulous, jumping rope. Use your creativity and imagination. Yeah, jump, I love jumping. I even like trampolines. Oh, jumping I, rope I is have, great. I love my trampolines rebound. are great too. Oh, yeah, it's the better because it's less impact on the knees. Yeah. yeah, that's what I do. And we didn't talk about the high intensity interval trainings, which are uh -huh. awesome for busy professionals. Yeah. for sure. If you can, do, if you're ready for it, it can be yeah. great for you. Great. But, but I say people can always be ready because they go at their own high intensity. True. It's all relative. So, so for instance, I go and I do high intensity. I don't sprint. I jog. My, my, my intensity interval is just jogging. And my rest, instead of just walking, I do push-ups. I do squats. Yeah. One interval, I yeah. push up. one. So I do 20 like this in, in 16 minutes. Yeah. I jog. Uh, whatever I jog. I don't know how much I jog. A, a mile and a half. And I do a hundred push-ups and a hundred squats because on each rest, I take 10, 10 squats, 10 push-ups. Yeah, there you go. And then I continue to jog for another, but so in the end, I have a total jog of three miles. So that's my, yeah. and I don't sprint because somebody will say, oh, it has to be sprinting to be, oh, no, I don't. Because yeah. then I wouldn't yeah. be able to do the whole thing. And again, it yeah. goes to the, the sustainability of the thing. Yeah. And when I get better, I go from 10 push-ups to 12 push-ups in the same yeah. 15 seconds. Yeah, interval is training 30, is fantastic. Right. 
Right. I love interval training and you and I love it. You don't have to be in the gym for two hours. You don't have to be in the yeah. gym for even a full hour. You can yeah. get a 20 quality minutes, bam, workout. Done. There, yeah, 30 minutes, and, 20 and minutes. Even I if you do, got 10 minutes available. Yes, it's awesome. And I do the same or similar routine on the rebounder. I do like yeah. one minute bouncing and then I go for 30 seconds, I lift weights. Great. I do like biceps until I exhaust the biceps and then I'll go to the next muscle. So it can be done, whatever, if you have elliptical, you can do it, if you have a treadmill, if you have a pool, whatever you have, I'm sure most people have at least one equipment at home. And if you don't have any, Matt will show exercises that require no equipment and do not think, oh my gosh, I can go to the gym, that's it, I'm done, right. you're not. <laughs> yeah, and bottom line, bottom line, we, if you, she just gave you a ton of great information right there, but hire a coach or, or ask Mihaela, or send me a message, get you, you're, you're not qualified, most likely you're not qualified and you could hurt yourself, right? So just make sure that you're asking for help. Yes, that's another good point. And I wanna say, I made an announcement yesterday, I wanna create a um, virtual quarantine <laughs> container. Well, oh, as, yeah. as we are now isolating ourselves in our real life, I wanna create for one week, a Facebook group to quarantine with me where every day I will give you tips on how to manage this situation. I'll be talking about, you know, the, the food, the supplements, the exercise, the sleep, all things that make for a healthy mind body um, situation during yeah. stressful times so if you want to join that group i did not create the group yet i will create i'll, I'll yeah. come back and post a link to that again it's going to be i free. would like an invitation yes sure. i will invite you and i'm thinking to bring guests in there like yeah i have friends i'm i love meditation but i'm not a meditation coach or anything yeah. like that so yeah. i i will invite friends to come and share uh this will be like a community service basically at no, no charge for those of you that, uh, because I don't want anyone that knows me and you uh, to feel isolated and to fall yeah. into despair during this time. We have kids at home. I don't know, Matt, if you're homeschooling. Yeah, you. she's here. Yeah, she's on the computer doing her schoolwork right now. Right, so we have to reinvent ourselves. We have to see how we're gonna yeah. juggle uh, work and businesses and uh, health and children at home and all that. Uh, so that's the way I want to serve my community. So if you are interested yeah. in joining this yeah. uh, container. Definitely. Uh, and the reason I'm creating a separate group for it, because I want to make sure that when it would want to be a private group. So people, when are in there, they, they feel private. It's not uh, on yeah. open Facebook and, um, you know, just for the, the intimacy factor. And yeah, I love it. Plus, Great people idea. that will join will, will raise their hand that they really want to be part of this. Um, Good idea. Support. Yes. Good thank job, you. Mihaela. Anything else you want to add? Thank you. No, thank no, you. No, I think we're good. So, I don't know uh, if we had any questions. I wasn't able I, to go on and see the Facebook. I don't know why. Can you check quickly to see if there are any questions? If not, we wrap it up. It's a little over one hour, but it's not too bad. We had the uh, people joining our, my, uh, yeah. no, no questions, right? No questions today. So as you watch the recording of this, again, we are grateful for you watching live and the recording. If you find it valuable, as always, please share with your friends and family and, uh, any questions that come up, post them below. And we will come back and post the, the link to Matt's page and yes. this group that I'm going to create and uh, offer for one week. And uh, Love it. Love that idea. Anyone, if anyone of you wants to get private support, uh, we can, uh, you can reach out to Matt or to me because you have to yeah. see who do you feel pulled to call with. <laughs> to call with to work with yeah to get help from we are here for you we yes. are here to help that's it i am going to end the live meeting see you next week
I guess this ends the meeting all together, not the life. Something is different today on our on the on my end here. <laughs> I'll just end the whole thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. Much love. Bye. See you. Bye.